Hi. Hello. Well, you already know what this is. It's the obligatory skull drawing for every artist. Of course, every artist has a skull drawing. I don't know why. I don't know what's the purpose of it. It might be for a deeper meaning. Or it's just interesting to draw. It has many details. You can learn light on it. Reflection. It has historical significance. But every artist has a skull drawing. And I just wanted to join the bandwagon. Now, of course, this is not my first skull drawing. Probably I drew one way back. But I don't remember. I was probably four when my mom was concerned. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. It's lost in the archives of lost drawings. So I just started to draw it in Photoshop. As you can see, this is my drawing interface. Of course, I use the reference. I'm not a psychopath. And I just started to block the shapes out. I started to make the round shape for a head, of course, and the jawline, and just like the main shadows and the main lights and the direction of the light. And um, if you're wondering why the skull is floating on the top left corner, it's a program called PureRef, it's for references, and it's just awesome if you want to have floating windows in your screen that don't interfere with anything. And um, I have the navigator on the bottom left, just to see the thumbnail, just to see how close it is to call, or how it looks like from far away. Because every time you draw, you tend to get in close and see the details, but it doesn't really have the whole composition. And I didn't zoom in till now, because I just wanted to have the main values down. And the reason I draw it in grayscale is because I wanted to color it later. But you'll see it later on. Doesn't really matter right now. Um, I just started to sculpt it. Like as you would do with anything. Not that I sculpt it. Makes a bit of sense. The most difficult part was to draw the teeth and one tooth, like the one in the middle of the canvas, I don't know how it's called. You can probably see it, it's the biggest one and it's so annoying because I didn't see it when I was drawing it. I only see it now and I cannot see it anymore. And I didn't correct it during this whole process. But it doesn't really matter. You can't see it unless you notice it. You know what I mean. I hope I hope you know what I mean. And I saw that the jawline is not perfect and everyone needs to have a good jawline. That's the most important part about any human feature. Physical feature at least. Um, the most challenging part was to draw the light. You can see that in the reference picture there's a soft light coming from the top right and a way harsher light from the left side, which was interesting to draw. I really liked it. Um, of course I added the signature cracks in the skull. I don't know what any of these means. I'm not an anatomy student. I'm not a student at all. I don't know why I started saying that. Um, I, there are three main parts um, that are composing the whole skull. Th those are the visceral sutures and neurocranium. I don't know that. I just googled it. I literally googled it and I'm just looking at all the bones now, but apparently there are like at least 24 bones. I have no idea. There are many bones. There are many bones. I'm not an anatomy student at all. But as you can see, I was playing with the values, adding some more shadows. Of course, keeping it in the grayscale only. Um, the brushes that I use, you can see that there are on the left side, they are in the tool presets, and I got them 
from a very good YouTuber that I highly suggest you to check it out. He's an illustrator. He's called Boro, Boro Drawing. And um, yeah, he had just a bunch of custom brushes and I took them because why not? Oh, I deleted the skull there. I panicked for a second, but it's fine. It's fine. And you can see the little divots on the side of the skull. That was fun to draw. It was fun to draw. I don't really zoom in in general when I draw. But when I see a pixel, a slight pixelation already, I'll, I start to zoom out because no one's gonna zoom in so far to see the pixelation. And um, well, it's meant to be seen as a whole, not as a zoomed in picture anyway. Of course, having uh, cracks in the skull, I don't know what they're used for. I honestly don't know, but that's nature. It's fascinating. And I think it turned out well. The teeth were a challenge, but it turned out better than expected, especially the rim lighting. That was fun to make. And um, the time it took, it was around two hours. I didn't really look at the clock, but it took me a while. The, um, I did it in one session. It wasn't that difficult. It was interesting, an interesting study. Didn't draw skulls in a long time. Um, I added some more contrast and I thought it's over, but it wasn't. I got a random boost of inspiration and you know those pop art from the 70s, 80s? I don't know with Marilyn Monroe that are like in four boxes yeah well I used that and uh, I, I used a little bit of color theory okay I'm not the best in color theory but you know if you google color theory some things are gonna pop up and I use the boxes I know I wanted to have purple and I put purple first and um, I put orange because I like the color orange and the rest just came from the color theory thingy it's it's called let me just see my memory is not too good I basically have the memory of a hamster of course I got the skulls in and I took for I kind of cheated a little bit, okay. For purple, its color should be yellow, so I put a yellow diagonally, and um, for orange, I put green, and I made sure that the orange is not necessarily an orange. It's a bit too red. The purple is not a vivid purple. It's like a washed-off purple. Same goes with the green. It's not a green. It's a teal. I don't know if that's the color, but. You know, it's not green green. So, going by the my color theory chart, it was a quadrilateral color theory thingy. I don't know what that means, but you know, it's a quadratic illustration. So I made each skull a different color. I couldn't let it like that. So I made a yellow skull for the purple box, a blue skull for the orange box, and I was playing a lot with the layer settings. And uh, I really like how it turned out. I like the yellow skull. It looks like a golden skull, really Indiana Jones-esque, really interesting. That's my favorite box, if you ask me. Uh, also in the green box, I made the skull more red not orange, because I just wanted to break up the symmetry of the image. There's no rules in art, guys. There's no rules, really. And um, there I just use complementary colors for every box. Like if it was yellow, I made the skull purple. Same goes with the purple box, I made the skull yellow. And uh, for green, red, and so on. I really like the yellow box, that's my favorite box because the skull is purple and 
it's opposite the com complementary one. It's really interesting. And I just made a full composition at the end. But I ended up just hitting auto on brightness and contrast and Photoshop did a really good job. I really like how it turned out in the end. I hope you like it. I just didn't want to have just a skull drawing. And I made a modernist version of a pop art. I just zoomed out at the end, check it if it's okay. I didn't see it then, that the tooth is so big, but it doesn't matter. You can't see it. Well, you can't see it now because I told you, but don't look at it. Just enjoy it, if you like it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope you liked it. If you did, I might draw more. Let me know what you think of this, of my skull drawing. I don't know if it's okay. It was just a fun exercise and I also just put it in a pop style 80s, 70s vibe thingy. Anyway, that was it for me and for you because I'll just be going away. I hope you're happy. Hope everything is good. Consider subscribing. I'm gonna draw more, maybe maybe some more animations. Actually, I was thinking to do the skulls in a 3D rotation thingy, but that would take some time. I'll see. Take care now. Enjoy your day, your night. Hope everything is good. Okay, talk to you.